everybody. I am here with somebody you probably know just because she is not only one of the most engaging and active members of our congregation, but she is a longtime leader in our community. And I'm just delighted for you to meet Diane Zidman. And uh, Diane, why don't you maybe start, um, give us a little background about um, your life, your professional career, what you do now. Um, I know it's, it's, it's varied. There's a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting stories. So just tell us a little bit about yourself now, uh, you know, how you got to where you are now. So briefly, um, I can and thank you for having me today. This is a pleasure. And thank you for that wonderful intro. It was very kind of you. Um, so briefly, I think I have a lot, a lot of the things I do are because of my father. My father instilled such a sense of doing in me. He always was volunteering. He always was including us with him. And being the only daughter, he felt like I should be doing this even more than my brothers. So I really look up and I thank my dad for all the inspiration he gave me. And I started volunteering basically, I think when I was 10 years old, we had um, a neighbor. Now it's going to probably show my age a little bit, but he had polio and he was in an iron lung. And I organized a group of all of the neighbors and everyone for a fundraiser to buy him different things so we could entertain him while he was in this horrible iron lung. You know, things that we could hold up that he could look at. So I think that's kind of where my, my sense of doing and, and helping others really started. And um, kind of moving forward, I was involved with the B'nai B'rith women. I was involved with Ord for a while and then Lakeside. And Lakeside is where I really found what I could do. So when we joined Lakeside, oh my God, how many years ago? Almost 40 years ago, I would say, long time, but I'm only 41. So what led, <laughs> that clear. what led you and Mike to join Lakeside? What, what, well, what we, drew were, you? we were both raised conservative. We belonged to Northwest Suburban in Morton Grove. Bless you. And when we moved to Deerfield, we started looking at the conservative congregations. And to be honest, nobody welcomed us. We had good friends that belonged to Lakeside. Um, I will admit to you, I was not thrilled with the services when we first joined. It's a little too classical reform for me, but the people, the congregants, we felt welcome so much. And my kids loved the school. And why do we do most of the things we do for our children? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I remember my son coming home from Sunday school or something saying, I think I learned more today than I learned in two years at the other temple, because he was learning why they were saying the prayers, not just reciting the Hebrew. He was learning the meaning behind the prayers. It was kind of interesting. Um, so fast forward, there was no sisterhood at Lakeside. There was kind of a woman's auxiliary, almost I equate it to what you might find at a church. And they didn't have any affiliation. And when Rabbi Charles Levy came on board, he said, I've never been at a congregation without a sisterhood. Who would like to start it? And there went my hand. That was the beginning of a lot of times of raising my hand. And um, we formed a sisterhood, joined the, it was then called the Midwest Federation of Temple Sisterhoods. I was sisterhood president for five years until finally somebody agreed to take it over. But we did some wonderful things. And through that association, I got involved with the Midwest Federation. I was on their board for a while and started doing a lot of stuff. We had things called area days where we would have kind of a fair of all the different activities you could do and how you could get involved. And that was really how I really got involved in all the social justice issues. And if we move forward, I was on the board, right. um, the executive board, I was part of the transition team. And now it's continuing what I love to do at Macomb Solar Lakeside. That's and I, I love the involvement and the community. This, this merger was the very, very best thing that's ever happened. I I'm, remember sitting next to you or talking with you at a party way before the merger even happened. And we kind of were hinting at it. I remember, I mean, it was sort of happening, but it, it was happening, but it wasn't happening. I remember um, that. 
Yeah, I do too. And I could, I, I was thinking in the back of my head, I was like, what an amazing lay leader we're going to have here. Uh, well, I'm, I'm lucky. Yeah. So it's just been such a wonderful experience of all of us coming together. The beauty of two rabbis. I mean, how could we be luckier than that? I mean, it's wonderful. It's, it, it's been probably one of the best experiences having this happen. That's wonderful. But yeah. And I, I love my involvement. I love the Tikkun Alum Committee. I love the way the committees were formed with people from Lakeside, people from, from Solel, so that we really got to know each other. And I've made some wonderful, wonderful friends through all this and actually even branched out more through some of the people who were, like the people at Solel who were involved in different types of things and bringing that to us. Like Alan Green has got me involved in the refugee things. In fact, an hour ago, we were on a call with Congressman Schneider through the Chicago Coalition for uh, the Jewish Coalition for Refugees. So, you know, it's just been so interesting. And I think my motto has always been, you can't stop learning. Mm. You just have to keep learning. Yes. Yeah. A very Jewish idea. What are yeah. some of your particular passions? I know you, 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 you are involved in so many activities, refugees, um, uh, you know, uh, against gun violence. What are some of your particular passions? What really draws you out? Okay, so my one really strong one is something that a lot of newer members don't know as much about me is about six years ago, I got involved in, I, I went to a presentation by Sheriff Tom Dart about sex trafficking and came home and said, oh my God, I can't believe that this is actually happening right here in my own backyard. You know, as like most people, we thought it was happening. You no, know, it's Asia, it's all, it's, it's all, it's not here, it's not us. And I came home and I said, what can I do? And I found the Jewish Coalition Against Sex Trafficking, which was part of the um, Federation. I joined it and I took a class and I actually got a certification in, it's called a Certificate of Training in Commercial Sexual exploitation. And through that certificate, it allowed me to volunteer at a safe house for survivors. That has been, and then I went on for several years doing presentations for community groups. I did one at Lakeside. I did a couple of rotary presentations to talk about awareness of how you can see this happening. What do you do? How do you know if your child, your grandchild is moving with the wrong group? How do you see the signs? And it really was a very strong passion. Um, unfortunately, in the last year and a half or so, there's been no volunteering. There's been so much has been, we've lost so much. Mm -hmm. I intend to get back. However, the safe house that I was volunteering at that was in the Northern suburbs has moved to, um, I think it's Kenosha. Pretty sure. So it's taken away the being able to hear, but that was a major, major passion. Now, sex trafficking, I, I you know, I, I know a little bit about it just, you know, from, from actually from police officers that I am friendly with that used to just that I made friends with when I was a rabbi to previous congregation, they were guards and, and they would tell me about it. I mean, it really is prominent in Chicago. I mean, we don't, right. we don't know about it, but it, it, it happens, especially from what I remember around like major events, like when there's like a Super Bowl or like, is it, is it am I right in saying that? You are absolutely right, but it's even happening. And do you know the Optima building in Skokie? The one oh, sure. that kind of, okay. Yeah. So there was a major sex trafficking ring going on in that building about four years ago. Major. Oh my, a lot of doctors live in that building. And the residents of that building knew something was going wrong, but they thought it was bedding. Until one day they started, to, they saw girls being taken in and out. They saw a lot of strange things and there was a raid there. And it, yeah, so. Oh my God. Yeah, that really affects people. There was also a raid in Highland Park in a nail salon. So yeah, it, it's happening all over. And that's the part that most people are shocked. I would start my presentations basically by saying, what do you think when you hear the term sex trafficking? And I would take three or four people. I said, okay, at the end of my presentation, I'm gonna ask you the same question. 
And the answers were quite different because people didn't think it could happen here. You could truly educate. I mean, even yeah. just right now, you truly can educate people about something. And people know there's gun violence. People know that, but not that, that it makes it any easier, but people just people don't know. Things like sex trafficking and human trafficking, tend, people don't want to talk about it. That's the problem. It makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. But some of the, I mean, we met with policemen, we met with firemen, we met with first responders in part of this, this coalition that I was just to educate people. Right. So that was, that was a great thing. But um, you asked me about my, per, my career and all that. So I worked for Crate and Barrel for 23 years. Um, the last five years of my career, I was director of purchasing, which was a fabulous job. A just big job. Yeah, it was a big job, but my job was quite interesting. I was director of purchasing on the operational side of the business, which basically meant if you walked into a crate and barrel store, pictured it with no merchandise mm -hmm. at all, my department was everything else. So, so like the cash registers, the counters, the, the, the lights, that exactly. kind of stuff? Okay. Actually, everything but the cash registers. The tech department took care That's of that. But we were the fixtures, the packaging, the lighting, the security, the, the everything. Everything to support the sale of the merchandise. So, so I got did you work closely? Did you have to work closely with the merchandise team to make sure everything coordinated? So actually, my most of my work was done coordinating with the architects and the designers of the store, working on all the fixturing. But then, yes, with the merchandise department, if they had a special need for a special fixture, a special display, um, I got to travel to every new store opening, help set up stores. I had a wonderful career. It was a great, great company. But when they were sold and Gordon Siegel sold, it, it changed. It changed the whole corporate environment. And I thought they're bringing, these new company is bringing in a lot of mid-management and higher management people. And I didn't want to get that tap on the shoulder saying, you're out. So I gave a year's notice and I went, I retired the way I wanted to. Right. You had, you enjoyed, you enjoyed the time you had. Yeah, I really did. And then I was retired for maybe, oh, I don't know, six months, took some classes. I didn't like retirement. And I know most people love it. But I guess when you're active, it's a hard thing. I also kind of lost my identity. Like I would meet somebody, you know, I'm Diane Zidman. I'm director purchasing a crate and barrel. It wasn't like I was, you know, putting the feather in my head, but it was like an identity thing. And I knew that I had a purpose and I knew I had someplace to go every day. I lost that. So this part-time job at, um, it was Chicagoland Jewish High School. It's now Rochelle Zell. It fell in my lap and it is the best place in the world. Yeah. It's a very wonderful. special school. It's, it's oh, really remarkable. I it's agree amazing, with you. It's an amazing school. Yeah. It really is. Amazing students, an amazing staff. I, I love being there. I work 7.30 to 12.30 most days, only four days a week now. I'm obviously off for every Jewish holiday. That's great. I so you can really, so it's, it, it, it's, you can kind of get the best of both worlds in terms of you've got more time to pursue your passions. You don't have to like, you know, worry about, you know, uh, you know, supporting kids and making a living in that way. You can do exactly. some work that you love and do other stuff you love. Yeah. And it's yeah. great because I get up in the morning and I have a place to go yeah. and I feel fulfilled by it. And I do admin work. So I'm not bringing my work home with me most of the time. Sometimes right. I am like, like any job. We do tend to bring things home with us sometimes. Like now the worry because our senior class is in Israel right now. Oh. Yeah, they normally go right after winter break, but of course they couldn't go then. And this is a, a trip that's taken every year by our senior class. They left a couple of weeks ago, but they're, they're safe right now. They went um, with a group out of Israel. R Ramah Israel is who's sponsoring their group now. Normally our rabbi and our staff are chaperones, but that wasn't allowed this year. So this Ramah Israel is handling all the things. So yeah. Their parents must be a little worried. Well, the person who's from Ramah, who's le leading the group, is sending letters every day to the Good. parents. 
beautiful letters. They're up north, they're safe. They're, you know, obviously they're in touch with security every day. They're monitoring their movements. They're not gonna take them any place that they're gonna be in harm's way. And they're having a wonderful time. Right. We're enjoying being there. They're enjoying being with their peers and, you know, they're keeping them safe. It, 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 it's scary. If I had a kid there right now, and I feel like these are my kids sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. In yeah. some sense, they're, the parents know the parents must be committed to their life if they're sending their kids to the high school. So they're, they're going to have some trust and faith. And so many of them, we have so many people who are born in Israel, who live in Israel, who come here with a couple kids on green cards. I mean, I have a lot of Israeli kids. And we have a girl who graduated last year that just completed two weeks training, their final training for the IDF. Good for her. She had a beautiful blog today, beautiful blog about what's going on and her feelings and yeah. But yeah, it's a difficult time. It is. Yeah. Tell, 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 I know a little bit about what the Kuno Library does, but tell me a little bit more about what it does. Well, There's so many activities. Well, that's the whole purpose of it is to, you know, repair the world the best we can in so many different ways. So we have broken up into different groups. Like we have something called Team Sedic. So we have somebody who handles gun violence, not handles it, but somebody who's like chair of gun violence. Someone from the Green Committee sits on. We have people who are involved in different groups like JCUAH, like um, the Chicago Coalition, you know, the refugee thing. Um, oh my God, hunger, just kind of homelessness. So we have somebody kind of, dealing with every facet of social justice, social action through our involvement in all the different groups. And our vision, when we started this kind of, our vision was to be the Tukun Olam leader in the Chicagoland area. So we hope that we're kind of getting there. We're, named, we're getting a lot done. We really are. And it, it feels great, the stuff we're doing. And there's so much to be done. I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> Yeah. So much repairing to be done. What other, what are some of your visions and dreams for the committee? It's to continue the excellent work we're doing and obviously to expand the committee and actually to be take, take on more things. Like we're trying to get more involved in diversity, equity, inclusion, you know, as the board is and as the whole congregation is, but to get more involved in that, get more involved in some of the, the hate crimes that are going on. You know, not only just looking at the Jewish community, but let's look at our brothers and sisters in the Muslim community, in the Asian community, and offering support there where we can. So I think we're just trying, we wanna be everything to everyone. We know we can't be, we can't be everywhere, but we're trying to reach out where we really feel the need is, you know, to get on these issues. And again, through our, um, yeah, obviously, we work a lot with RAC Illinois. RAC is a tremendous partner of ours and very involved with RAC. And so any of the initiatives that RAC is supporting, we're jumping right on the bandwagon with them. I mean, they're supporting mental health initiatives now, the refugee things. So there's really, there's never, there's never a time that we come to a meeting and say, gee, what can we do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's always like, what do we do first? Yeah. You know, and how do you prioritize all of these needs that are out there? So we're trying. Yeah. Let me ask you one more question. One of the things that I don't know why am I getting feedback on my mic, but one of the things that I think is really I've noticed about you and Mike and that I really admire is some people just get involved in the synagogue. They just do social justice. They just do Torah study, which is fine, which is wonderful. You and Mike are really both involved spiritually and in terms of social action. Do the two nourish each other for you? Is worship an important part of your duty? Is there, how, what, what role does worship play for you? Oh my God, such an important role. I, to me, the, the Shabbat services give me meaning. It kind of, it just ties up the whole week and makes me look forward to what's coming up. I miss Havdalah. I can't wait for Havdala to come back. 
that was just such a wonderful end of the day and a beautiful, just the meaning of it is so beautiful, but we love the services. We love the community that's on the services. We love the informal discussions and then the service get a lot of meaning out of it. We just would love it. And I love that each of you is involved in the service. And each of you brings something different to that service. And that is so meaningful. It's just, it's so beautiful. Oh, wow. Just to see the relationship with you and Ike, just, it puts a smile on our face all the time. Yeah, well, just, we're, we're very lucky. We're very lucky. We it's just realize how well and how, how important this, merger was for us to come together yeah so I important mean, in so, so many different. ways so many ways well yeah. you were such an extraordinary part of it and we are so grateful to you to mike for everything that you do and thank you for taking the time this afternoon and looking forward to many many more happy occasions and important activities together and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today this was wonderful okay. have a wonderful rest of the day Thanks. You too. Lots of love to you both. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.